Hello, there's no Danielle today. She is adulting and I am adulting too. That's what I'm calling this anyway. I am applying on this really cool bobbin. This is the bobbin that I did at um, Oaks Park out of my dumpster diving seconds. And I don't have a ton of yardage on here because I, I need to get a whole bunch of other stuff done. So I thought I would do um, it as is. And I am plying it with this really pretty mylar thread. Um, this is what I do with a lot of my Angora. And I hold my thread at an angle, like a 90 degree angle. So that way, as it plies, goes in there. And um, I know Spencer and a whole bunch of people were talking about seconds because I was like, oh my God, don't throw away your Angora. This is all less than two inch fiber this had tons of second cuts this was all of the bellies and and all of the matted stuff and it spins up awesome it does not shed as I am taking the fiber out and running it through my fingers I'm getting rid of the loose parts and I have it spun with just enough twist that it um actually doesn't you know throw my spinning off or my yarn off because good Angora yarn doesn't really shed. You can see a little bit flying through the air maybe. Um, and that should be the last of any of the super short stuff as it goes. Um, commercial Angora yarn sheds. A lot of commercial Angora yarn is just poorly designed. It is only two inches or less because they shear their rabbits at such a fast schedule. So it's more likely to shed. Um, and I've got lumps and bumps and crazy in here and there's even some that a beginner spinner spun uh, I had her spin for the very first time so um so lots of fun stuff and hopefully I can see comments I don't know my phone's been acting really weird with the comments lately so we'll see how it goes it's a quiet day here I had a whole bunch of sales earlier and I'm trying to get stuff organized because like I say black sheep of Gabby gathering oh hello stephanie i see your comments cool um black sheep gathering as soon and um we don't take the bunnies down there but we have a booth so we've got lots of rabbit stuff and one thing we're going to do is i've got tons and tons and tons of all four breeds in the small bags right now um so we'll be selling that at the pearly shell booth um buy three get one free so you guys can make your own samplers which is really cool and will be really fun. Um, I've still got a whole bunch of French to bag up. I just sheared several more of my French Angoras. So we'll be bagging that up soon. And then I'm on a kick to spin yarn because I took the winter off from spinning Angora and now I have a backlog. Which I had also asked this one. You guys can see that. It's on my rose still. That one, I am going to look at getting... I'm debating whether to spin that as is, or apply that as is, or whether I should ply it, or spin and then ply it with, um, Shelly Ross from Celtic Oaks gave me a whole ton of absolutely beautiful fawn angora, and I'm not sure, I think that would be really, really pretty with fawn. I haven't done one of those yarns in a long time. So what are you guys all up to today? You having fun? Enjoy, it's beautiful weather here. It's like 65 degrees and sunny and perfect and my nephew graduates um, sorry I had a phone call coming my nephew graduates high school this week so that is um, happening so we've got all sorts of people coming down and seeing and now the person's calling that's all right I'm just gonna let it ring because I know who it is um so the person's coming down or all sorts of people coming down and doing stuff hang on Hello? So we're doing that for fun and we're having a big party. All sorts of stuff going on. And nothing much bunny related though I do have a whole bunch, I have a couple litters I need to sort through. So I thought I'd do that later too. Um, hopefully tonight, if not a little bit later. Um, and see, we got this is black. This will be black for my black dough. 
that's obvious. It's a, but she's a really um, pretty black satin angora that we just sheared. Hopefully she's gonna have babies soon. We've got bait convention babies coming. I've got French everywhere right now and a couple English litters do and three English Angora litters in the nest boxes which I haven't had for a long time so that's exciting including some brokens got a really cute little broken that was fostered to a friend's litter so I'm anxious to see how that one turns out since they're presenting in um, Springfield this year And along with broken satin angoras. Lots of fun there. So I'll show you guys what the yarn's looking like. Get this up closer. So you can see how pretty that's gonna be when it's all done. See, I use this plying technique for a lot of different things, um, but my angora is where it really shines, I think, the most. That and mohair. I apply the mohair the same way. Sometimes I do mohair and angora together because they offset each other. And I actually have a bag of Blue Face Luster locks. Um, the seconds can shed more than the prime wool. It, um, the longer the fiber, the less likely it is to shed. This is, was really short. I mean, like I'm talking like one to two inches. Um, so if it's going to shed, you can get it off. If I let it out spin itself, like this little bit is actually really well locked in there now. So I'm not going to have a shedding yarn as a, as, um, later on. Um, and then the final set and the twist will also do that. Seconds are really great for lumpy, bumpy spinning. I think it's when people try to spin them smooth that then they get into trouble with it. Um, to show you, let's see if I can have. Okay, so this is a bag of Prime English. So you can see the length. of a prime coat, even with that little bit there. There we go. So that's never going to shed. That's actually going to spin into only a lace, which lace is great, but um, that is really the main uh, reason for having an English Angora show coat is lace. There's no other major purpose for it because I can't mill this, but it will spin into beautiful fiber. Where well, this is a mixture of actually all uh, this is a mixture of French and satin. I was trying to think if we shared any others, but we didn't. Um, so it's going to have, a, it's a little bit differently textured, and it's got actually an alternating texture because of the French versus the satin. The satin, of course, is, um, is finer and has, you know, a finer micron. And then the French has a little more halo, like right there you can see the halo because I got a good section of French right there. A lot of this coat is from um, Dory who we sheared off and she had a huge amount of coat even though she had been losing her coat she has had a good I think we got eight ounces of prime off of her plus the plus whatever seconds we had she was in a five month show coat so so her prime was very very long um Deidre took her prime home to spin because she deserved it and that was her fun thank you, thank you sunshine. that was a fun thing to do and she can take her coat and I know she's gonna enter her coat in the wool skin garment contest in Springfield Massachusetts um as something I don't know what she'll make which is really cool and that's a way that all of our show rabbits can continue to compete for a long time is through that. Yeah, her coat was so well balanced. 
um, I've got to bring in um, Colt's coat, Shelly. Colt's coat that I sheared off this time. Oh my gosh. Talk about an amazing coat on a rabbit. He, um, just incredible. And his coat's going to go into some of the bags. But I think I'm going to spin some of it. I actually still have a bobbin sitting here full of coat from um, Miranda. And I'm thinking about spinning some of Colt's coat and plying it together because that would be kind of fun. They are both chocolatey goodies, mother and son. So it might be kind of a fun coat to do. Spin to do. And it's how, because of how I'm holding my yarn, that is why you're getting the, the, te the extra texture in there. Because I'm actually wrapping the fiber. So then that makes kind of the lumpy bumpy. If I didn't want it to be quite that way, I would, um, if, I hold, if I held the strands together instead, that would correct that. Um, I just want this to be crazy textured. So I'm doing everything I can to increase the texture. And this is my first time flying on this wheel. It's a nice little wheel. So we're getting to know each other still, though. It's a used wheel that I took in partial trade for one of my Modricrofts because I needed a teaching wheel really badly. And because people keep buying them from me, and that's wrong. So I, have to, I had to get a new teaching wheel. So this is now my new teacher. You guys can see Jack sleeping there. He's down sleeping beside the wheel. He's exhausted today. He had a long day yesterday. No locks to this one. Just the, this is just um, plying the French and satin. So this is just just as it was. This is the Oaks Park bobbin, the, the dumpster diving yarn. I'm not going to title it that though. Um, and so it's just all sorts of crazy because I taught people and did all sorts of stuff on there. You can always see how much I was teaching depending on my yarn. Um, it's kind of funny. Like you can see that this bobbin over here, I talked a ton because it's all completely unevenly filled because I didn't have time to move it around. And then um, some of the other ones are much better. Um, this one, I had time to move around, but it's all sorts of crazy because I kept getting, because I just like literally spun. I really like spinning in public. I always forget how much I like it. Um, I don't think that's a good name either. I think it should be like reclaimed. Isn't that the hip word right now? Reclaimed. Um, upcycled. It could be upcycled yarn. It's called upcycled yarn. Something like that. Could call it Oaks Park Upcycle. Then that makes it sound hipper. For some reason I decided it needed to be pink. I guess because Oaks Park it reminds me of pink because it's got roses in bloom everywhere. Because of course Portland's the rose city. And um, it's, it's such a beautiful, beautiful location. So when I get to these places that I've spun it less, which I meant to do, um, I actually hold it and I let my tension build for a second and then let it wrap. That way it gets a little bit, it keeps the twists a little bit more even in there in my ply. So it makes it a little bit better. I'll tell you what, I'm used to plying it with a woolly winder and now that I don't have one on here it's kind of a shock. Um, I am plying with a mylar thread and mylar, it's like literally like a mylar balloon and it's a super fine glittery thread. It's fairly strong and I keep these in all sorts of different colors. Um, I tend to buy, like if I find them on sale, I buy a whole bunch um, in these huge um, cones. That's like not one of my bigger cones actually. 
Um, and then I can take it and do all sorts of plying with it. I ply mohair with it. I ply angora. I add it sometimes to regular yarn, and it just adds just a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of shimmer. Um, this one will actually be fairly, fairly sparkly. And some people don't like the sparkly yarns. And if you don't, I would suggest using a silk thread or a nylon thread will work. Though you have to be careful with nylon because it can cut. Um, but silk works really, really well. Uh, sometimes I use even a sequined. I just happen to like the sparkle because I like glitter. That's why I have satin angoras. So everything's better when it's shiny. And it makes it kind of kind of pretty. And I actually was going to apply um, this one on the same, but now, like I say, I think I might take it and do that. This is a Kromsky um, Sonata. And I, like I say, I just got this in trade. I do carry these wheels. It's a very nice little wheel. Um, it's a very good, easy beginner wheel. And I have the bulky head on it today because I like to spin on the bulky flyers. Um, you can, you can actually ply on a drop spindle. What you're going to do is take your, um, the easiest way to do it is to wind off onto like a paper towel tube or a toilet paper tube or something like that. And then actually you'll have do more, basically multiple bobbins. And then you just, if you're, you normally spin clockwise, so you're going to ply counterclockwise. And you can ply your yarn like that. And that's how we did it for centuries before we did wheels. Um, I'm going to, we are going to do a drop spindling uh, thing. I'm thinking on, you know, we could probably do one. I'm going to see if Danielle's coming over on Saturday for the sun, Saturday market. Because she's a better drop spindler than I am. I'm a passable drop spindler. She can actually really show how to do them really well. Um, and answer questions and you can make your own drop spindle even at home with a CD and a dowel. Um, I can sometimes find the thread in smaller amounts, sometimes not. I need to see if I can get a cone winder. Um, I will let you know if I can get some in, I will post. I just literally sold out of all that I had in stock this past week. Um, to a lady who came in and was all excited by the thought of it. So I will see what I can do. This is like, I, my biggest cone is like 20,000 yards. So basically, you know, you can use it forever. And I do uh, sell a lot of the neutral colors in the bigger cones um, because you can continue to apply on them forever. So it makes it like a never ending supply. And I've used sequin yarn too for this, like sequin thread if I can find it. That makes it really fun. That does make it very sparkly. Where this is more like just a subtle shimmer. We, um, almost done with the bobbin. It always seems like I hate plying. I don't know whether you guys like plying. Like some people love plying. And that's like their favorite part of making yarn is that finishing. I think those are the same people who enjoy like prepping fleece like I am not a fleece prepper uh no it's all the same at least I've never found any it's always the same mylar thread it's there's a weight on here it's 169 22 so uh it's very very fine because a lot of like lace will be like 140 But some people love plying and love this. This is like I have to make myself ply. I have three things I have to ply. I've got this and then I've got 
Um, this is one of our Angora Blend Rovings, which we do, which under Spinner Select, um, Pearly Shell sells it. This is um, Corydale, a beautiful Corydale fleece, and then Angora. And I used um, Angora Seconds in this again, and it made kind of a slubby roving, which my mill kept telling me I could do this, and it turned out so cool because it's almost like a Donegal. But, then, but I've got this little sample that's due, and then I've got that bobbin. Unless I decide to put that one off and spin something else, that will be more fun. Which is very likely because I'm, I'm feeling in that mood right now. I'm not going to have a ton of time this weekend. I've got short days at the yarn shop because of graduation and all the parties and all the things. This week he's got, we had a band concert last night and then tonight we've got a choir concert. And Devin's not in the choir, but he goes to the choir concerts. And then tomorrow night is the scholarship awards, which is very cool. We live in a teeny tiny little town and, and all of, and a whole bunch of places offer scholarships. Um, like NWA area, we offer the Angora scholarship. A whole bunch of the little businesses offer scholarships to the local kids here, which is really cool. Makes a big difference. In their life. And Devin's hoping he got something good. So then hopefully next week I'll, my life will be a little bit more back to normal and I'll have more time for bunnies and stuff and we can look at bunnies and Play with the rabbits. All the bunnies. Okay, see, now I just stopped at the pole on this part. I wanted to make sure that this wasn't like a loose second cut, and it's not. It's just how it bubbled there. So we're good. And when I weigh and shear my rabbits, I only weigh the prime coat. I don't weigh the seconds. So seconds are kind of the bonus thing. And like I say, we tend to sell so much yarn and process so much roving that I actually can only almost, almost exclusively sell seconds or spin seconds. I mean, um, because that isn't something that tends to sell well for me. So I just spin it because the yarn sells like crazy. And, um, so that's my way of getting my Angora fix without hurting my bottom line because as a business owner, small business owner with the yarn shop, I always have to think of those things. I can't just willy nilly do what makes me happy, which is kind of dumb. It's like adulting on the ultimate level when it comes to the rabbits, not spinning all of the super prime fibers or hoarding it to the amount that you can't do anything with it because that happens too. It's amazing how quickly the Angora um, jumps up, but it's amazing how much I go through each mill run, how much I send in. I'm always shocked at how quickly when I start blending it, because we'll normally do four to five blends at a time, and that's a lot of Angora, um, especially if I try to do breed-specific blends because I don't have equal numbers of all the breeds. Um, this yarn I will probably sell around 50 cents a yard is what my price is. Um, anywhere from that, my super prime yarns, um, I sell for more. Yes, Shelly's one of my dealers, it's awesome. It's like getting surprise boxes of fun. She's like, my house is overflowing with Angora. I'm like, well, I can fix that problem for you. The hers was really nice. I didn't send hers to the blend. I, well, some of it did. Most of it went um, into the little bags or that I'm spinning because I needed some to do samples. Mine almost always goes all my brood stock. A lot of times I just shear it by color now and it just goes straight to the mill. I don't even, you know, go through it. I mean, I go through it and sort it, but I don't spend a ton of time on it. I've got, I did pull a silver tip steel coat out and I pulled a couple other ones out this time that are too awesome. 
like I say, Colt's coat is coming in here. Because that coat is just incredible. I love the rabbits that you never have to groom them and they just sit in their cage and they grow perfect coats. And then you shear them off and they shear off cleanly and then they just turn into amazing yarns because that's what they should all be like if you have to groom your angoras you need to look at your coat balance because that actually affects your spinning in the end um if their coat's unbalanced and they're getting webby and nasty they're not going to spin as nicely which is kind of an interesting thing balance affects it on all the sides i'm sure the same is true in all um, wool species we have a lot we can learn from the sheep community and stuff. And like I was show, looking at the lion heads, like I say, and their manes are so correctly crimped because otherwise, since they don't use blowers, otherwise they lose all their coat density. So it's kind of kind of interesting. Um, because any mats, they pull them out instead of grooming them. I've got, hoping that we get some more um, really cool blends done before over this summer for the Angoras, because every time I get roving blends done, I'm amazed at what it comes back as, and the yarn comes back so cool, too. say this to me is the boring part of spinning because it's not creating though at least this is a little bit better than a regular pine because I have to watch my fingers a little bit more we need to get to some of Max's fiber he had beautiful fiber when we sheared it off oh my gosh that fiber was incredible Dalton's rabbit, Max. He's one that I bred. And he had just, when I watched the playback of that and watched that coat falling, he had, and that's like his fourth or fifth coat. Coat machine. I like that when they do that too. That's what they have to do. I think it was interesting talking to the lion head people because um, the main gene, I don't know whether you guys know about the main gene or not, but basically it's a dominant gene. Okay, and it first appeared in a cross between a Havana and, a, and an Angora. They were going to try to make, or I mean a dwarf and Angora, they were going to try to make um, small Angoras. And it wasn't one of our Angoras. It was a breed called the Swiss Fox. Which Swiss Fox are bred to have a very hairy, almost a, um, like a, a bad Angora coat. We would consider it a bad coat, like a not very spinnable coat. So they bred those two together and they got the main gene and the main gene popped out in this short haired rabbit. Well, I was talking to them and I was like, it had to be carried because as much as we would love to say that genes spontaneously mutate and they can, it is much, much more likely that it gets hidden for a long time. And there were reports of seeing maned rabbits before that. No one had kept them alive. And in this case, the, um, that it had to be carried on the Angora. So I was talking because obviously a main gene on a short haired rabbit, you're going to see it. So in talking to them, they get what they call teddies. And if you guys ever look at a teddy Angora, it looks, or a teddy, whatever they are, lion head, it looks for all the world like a little tiny English Angora. They are absolutely adorable. And they don't get a full main break, but they will get a little bit of thinning over the saddle sometimes. Um, which a lot of our rabbits do too, and I'm wondering how much the main gene is affecting our coats. Um, because a lot of people with the with certain lines of Angoras in all the breeds, except for English, English are different, pre, um, 
talk about seeing that break over the coat, but they don't call it that. They call it all sorts of other things. Um, so I'm doing a lot of research right now on the lion head gene and how lion heads develop. And we're comparing pictures. I'm working with a couple of breeders up here because I'm thinking that there might be a main gene hiding in a lot of our angoras. And that is what it um, was amounting to because I think that I inadvertently got rid of it in my line. And the satin angoras, which is one of the breeds, satins and French are where you see it the most. And I think that um, by breeding in a couple other different things, I, acci I accidentally got rid of it by that and doing the um, selection. Is she a teddy lion head? They are so cute. I told the breeders I want a teddy lion head, and I spun lion head fiber at Oaks Park, and it spun really, really nice. Like, it spun like, um, kind of like, not like a pure English, kind of like a French English cross. It was really interesting. Um, I, because I was showing them that it spun, so I grabbed a drop spindle, and I took it over and spun it, and... I was like, look at, you guys have wool, you just need to use the wool, you know, you need to use the blowers and stuff. It was really fun. And I've got a whole bunch of pictures, I just haven't, with the graduation, had time to sit down and write up the pictures, because I got a whole bunch of really interesting pictures to compare things with. Um, it will depend on how that coat is. If it's a true teddy, it should grow back fairly quickly. If it's not, then it's anybody's guess because that's what a lot of that main gene does is it inhibits the wool growth on that. Um, you can at least brush it out, but, you know, it just depends. I don't know whether any of them clip their manes or not. I know that they do clip their teddies down with scissors because they don't do anything with the wool. And she's like, yeah, we have to shear them or else they mat, which is really interesting. Um, she said, because I was also talking about the feet, because um, she's like, if they have really woolly feet as a baby, it's almost always a teddy, because they carry a lot, in the line that I was looking at, they carry a lot of wool, actually, on their ears, too. They have incredible density, is one of the top breeders out there, and her manes are so dense, compared to a lot of the manes. They're an intriguing little breed. It's kind of like the Jersey Woolies. I really, um, really really like jersey woolly fiber oh see if her coat doesn't met then at least it's well balanced so that's good they are so cute shannon and i always talk about tiny shiny fluffies someday we're gonna make like little mini things and that's like a teddy lion head is very close to that There was a ruby-eyed white buck that they had at the show that I would have almost taken home, even though he was a real lion head. He was so pretty, but he had won. I always pick the winning ones, so yeah, they weren't going to let me take him. I don't know what the problem was. He probably won a lot. I was like, oh, I want that one. They're like, yeah, that one's just the best breed. Almost done here. Woohoo. Then, then I'll take it off and I'll post a picture later so you guys can see what it looks like. Because it's going to be really pretty. Maybe I'll get a close up here before I shut the video off so I can do other stuff here. Just break it off. I spin it for a second, get that twist at the end. All right. Here, let's see. And I dropped this. Okay. So that's. You guys can kind of see that sparkle. It's got a little bit of white and black. It's multicolored. So super pretty. That will be really fun probably about 80 yards there um <laughs> i can't even stand up today let's see here this yarn is a bulkier made in the same way this yarn is finer and this one has a clear 
sparkle. And then this is regular yarn that was a three ply with the thread. And then a two ply with the thread. So you can see all sorts of different things. This is a black thread here. This makes it look really cool. So anyway, I hope you guys have fun and I will talk to you all later. Bye.